don't need corporations. We don't need money. This can become a commune where everyone just helps each other. Yeah, we'll have one guy who like who like makes bread. And one guy who like looks out for other people's safety. You mean like a baker and a cop? No, no, can't you imagine a place where people live together and like provide services for each other in exchange for their services? Yeah, it's called a town. We love the lurkers. of death. Let's get this thing out of there. Did you hear it? That's the other click of death. She's trying to start, but she won't start. Of death, click of death, compressor's dead. Um, I didn't film the rest of it. Um, and I, don't, I think I'm gonna walk away from that one. That unit's 18 years old, and it had had some custom work done to it. It had, in the back of the unit, it had an actual defrost timer, mechanical defrost timer installed, which you really don't ever need on those. If your thermostat's working properly and your airflow's right and stuff, it'll, uh, constant cut in thermostat will keep that coil up without icing up but at 18 years old on a true um the only way i would do that compressor change out is if they signed on to replace the evaporator coil also you know do the evaporator coil the cap tube and probably the condensing unit and for that much money i think they're going to look at getting a new one we'll see we'll see what happens all right what I got for us today is uh, we're gonna go look, uh, we're gonna go change out this expansion valve on a process chiller. And the valve's really cool. It has a maximum operating pressure on the valve. It was a special order valve. And let's get over there, we'll get into it. That is the Advantage glycol chillers. They'll use these chillers on all kinds of different applications from plastic injection molding machines to beers this one's being used for coffee and we're gonna recover the charge and we got to change out this TXV here and it's a special TXV a special order and it's a uh, it's gummed up and not feeding and we're getting a low low suction alarm when it runs so there it's got the machine turned down let me hook up with the gauges and we'll recover the charge out of this thing all right, we got the recovery machine going. Everybody's open. Yep. Everybody's open for business. All right, we'll get it recovered out, and then we'll carry right, on. Peel back the insulation for the bulb. See, so they got the heat sink mastic on there, and I'll loosen these up just to get the power element out. Don't have to get all crazy with it. This is all while it's on the recovery machine. Get a little bit prepped and ready. Get that out of the way. And then I like to look to see where I'm going to be brazing at. It's my inlet. My outlet's right down here. So we're going to take this coil off. Get it out of the way. And then we got our equalizer tube is over here. Alright, so we're still on the recovery machine. Let's go over this thing real quick. It's just a little chiller. You got a pump. It's going to pump the glycol out to the tanks. Come back. The glycol gets chilled in this little heat exchanger right here. So this is your evaporator. One half of, on one half of, these plate, of the plate heat exchanger has a refrigeration side. The other side gets glycol that's pumped through there. This is your glycol holding tank. You can see there's a lot of glycol in there. Uh, it's propylene glycol, it's food grade. Um, and then you just have a regular old refrigeration condensing unit, little scroll, 134A condensing unit. It's got the manufacturer's controls. 
will usually have a flow switch and a free stat. So we got a flow switch right here. I believe, that, yeah, that's our flow switch. And you'll have a free stat. And you have your solenoid valve. And there's not a whole lot to them. Once you've worked on them, on them a bunch, it's our liquid line dryer. We're gonna change this out also. We're gonna change out the dryer and the TXV. And uh, there it is. We'll put some wet rags behind here so we don't melt the insulation. So I'll get a bunch of rags wet and put it behind there. Um, and just get this thing ready for a removal. Love removal machine. And uh, we'll take it from there. Oh yeah, I dropped my gauges and broke my gauge. So I got to get the Shannon gauge covers. You know, the little rubber Zorro gauge covers. I dropped her and she died last night. We're almost getting there. Minus 18. We're getting there. All right, so I just get wet rags everywhere. Um, all around the area I'm going to be working in. And the, this pooky stuff is real nasty. I'm going to try and keep it on there because I want to reuse it. Um, and we're just going to try and uh, heat them up and pop them out. I'll do my flux trick on there where I put the flux on the fittings. Try to try get the fittings out clean. And see how we make out here. You can always tell which TXV you need by the label on the power head. You'll see this one has a pressure limiting to um, 60 PSI. Um, it won't go over 60 PSI. I got the valve changed out and the dryer. I got my nitrogen holding charge going right now, just under 200 PSI. Let me zoom out. And uh, let's take a look. Uh, the valve is in. That's our new valve. She's all in there. I gotta re-insulate this with my foam tape, get that tidied up. And I'll do that when it's on the vacuum pump, our new dryer. And 
So I'm just checking down my leak check. And uh, when it passes, we'll get it on the uh, vacuum pumper. And we could talk about the chiller a little bit as it's going. That one's running. Go about 27 degrees is uh, what they're doing in these tanks. They're chilling coffee. My phone's been ringing like crazy. So the video's not the greatest, but uh, it takes about two pounds, 10 ounces to a clear sight glass. And uh, about 38 degrees. We're just getting started here. 105 condensing. 24 degree evaporator right now. We'll let it run around. Um, the tank's got a load on it. And we're circulating the glycol. It goes into the heat exchanger on one half and the refrigeration on the other half to take the heat out of the glycol. And it's pressure limiting valve. Uh, the maximum pressure on this valve will be 60, 60 PSI. That's a special order TXV, so always check the power element for the number on your expansion valve. So you just couldn't change it out with a, a TXV off your truck. You got to get the right one for the application. That's a heads up on these little advantage chillers if you come across these. Big difference. Uh, my suction pressure was so low with the old TXV. 